Awesome. So, um, you know, we, we know your story, so we just want to start from the beginning, right? Tell me a little bit about um, your service and about what happened while you were serving. Yes, yeah, so I was um, uh, got, was commissioned as an officer into the into the army after college in two thousand and two, and was um, sent to Fort Hood, First Cavalry Division, and deployed over to Iraq in early two thousand four. And we've been in uh, Iraq for just about three three weeks, so a short amount of time. But April thirteenth of two thousand four, kind of you know started out just like any other day would over in Iraq and. Woke up early, had a briefing, and um, we got into our vehicle, and about 10 minutes into our ride, our vehicle was struck by a roadside bomb, which, to make a long story pretty short, resulted in the loss of my left leg above the knee, where I stand now. Um, so yeah, it was the last day I ever really stood on my own two feet. Yeah, but but you know, in that, did you find this strength? Because you know, we'll talk. I want to talk in a minute too about um, your success as an athlete. But uh, you know, what was it like having to adjust to walking with a prosthetic and to living, you know, with? I'm, I'm sure that there were so many, um, you know, effects mentally as well from that day. Yeah, it doesn't come overnight. I mean, you don't just you know lose a limb and the next day you have a prosthetic and you're up walking again. It's it's a lot of. Um, a lot of, um, you know, hours spent in that hospital bed, kind of wondering what life will be like. But at the same time, so I was at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. And at the time is where all the wounded soldiers went from Iraq and Afghanistan. And I could look around and see soldiers who were missing so much more than I was. So two, three, four limbs sometimes. And, you know, really kind of looked at myself and thought, man, like I am the lucky one. And choosing to be thankful for what I still had, you know, wanting to live my life for those who no longer had to have given the ultimate sacrifice because too many continue or have and continue to give that sacrifice. So yeah, it was all about perspective and that kind of helped me accept the loss of the leg and move on. And that kind of propelled me into a life I never could have imagined. Yeah. And, and you're, you're ahead of me. So, you know, was there like a light bulb moment for you where you, you decided, you know, okay, athletics is something that, you know, I want to pursue and, and kind of how did it, how did it all get going for you? So as soon as I learned to walk, so with my prosthetic leg, I, so I had been an athlete when I was younger, big gymnast, dreamt of going to the Olympic games, obviously that didn't happen, but I would lay in my hospital bed and wonder, could I still be an athlete? Um, you know, could, would I be able to feel the, the sweat on my face, the thrill of the finish line? And luckily for me, there were these organizations that would kind of get us out of our hospital bed and out doing things that we never thought we'd do with, you know, two legs, much less with one sometimes. So learn how to ski on one leg, did a marathon on a bike that I powered with my arms, and then learn that there was an event called the U.S. Paralympics. And if I trained hard enough and dedicated myself to a sport, I could compete on the world's biggest athletic stage as somebody with a disability. So that dream was born pretty much as her, as soon as I, I, as I learned about it. Yeah. And just kind of run me through your timeline, because uh, I know that you've had quite a span with the Paralympic games. Correct me if I'm wrong. You've been to, this will be your third. Yep. I just, I just got back from my third. Yep. So when we're just give me the uh, the dates too and the locations of where you were and what events you competed in. I know we have the info, but I don't know if you have any good stories or anecdotes <laughs> from any of the games. Um, so yeah, so I competed in the 2008 Beijing Paralympic Games in the sport of swimming. Um, I didn't do very well athletically there. I um, didn't make best times, didn't make finals, but I was chosen to be the the flag bearer for closing ceremonies, which was incredible kind of what that was supposed to be at that point just you know the journey to get there and overcoming you know losing a leg a few years prior and then I switched to the sport of triathlon so I competed in the 2016 Rio Paralympics in the sport of triathlon and I competed on September 11th of 2016 so you can imagine the meaning there USA uniform got a bronze medal my teammates got gold and silver it was a USA sweep on September 11th and will go down as one of the greatest moments of my life, just being on that podium, three American flags going up, the meaning behind it, um, you know, showing the world the power of America, the American spirit was just incredible. And then most recently in Tokyo, um, just a few months ago, where I got fifth, um, a little bit of a different games, the COVID games, you know, not, no real spectators. Um, 
I had unfortunately gotten into a bike crash about eight weeks prior to Tokyo and I ended up breaking my back. So it wasn't, um, the, I was still able to be in Tokyo and compete, but it wasn't, um, expectations changed a little bit, but deciding just to be proud to be there. You see pictures of me at the finish line. It looks like I won the race, just really proud to be in the moment. So each game is obviously very different, but nothing ever takes away from putting on that USA uniform and representing our country. Yeah, you've done it twice now as, you know, a soldier and now as an athlete. And so, um, you know, a lot of people, I, just the last question I have, you know, is a lot of people, one of, you know, my girlfriend's dad has a prosthetic leg. So a lot of people who are going to be watching this, who are our viewers, you know, are you, you know, they have the same uh, goals as you too. And so, you know, to them, to, to anyone who, who might, you know, have a bad day, you know, think down on themselves sometimes, like, how did it, how did you get through some of the bad days? You know, I think first off, it, it's okay to have bad days. I mean, we all have them, right? We're all human. And so I think admitting that it's okay to have a bad day, but also, at least for me, perspective is a huge part of it. You know, a lot of times we think about, our bad days, but I can assure most of pretty much everyone that may be watching this, that there's people, you know, around the world that will probably love to have our bad days. So I think when you think about, you know, the little things like little things that we often forget about, like a roof over our head, I mean, food on the table, a warm bed to sleep in at night. I mean, little things that we take for granted, but find those little things and think about how lucky we are to, to have them. You know, it's so easy to think about the things that go wrong, the things we don't have, but think about the things that go right and the things that we do have. And I think it just kind of puts it in perspective and we're all just very lucky to live a life that we do. And we had the power to choose how we live it. So choose to make yours what you want it to be. Yeah, well, thanks for that. And also you're gonna keep competing. Do you have plans to compete in the next Paralympics? Um, time will tell. I uh, taken a few months just to kind of rest be, be mom, um, you know, do things that aren't quite as structured. And after the new year, I'll pick up a little bit more training and yeah, we'll see where it leads me. I'll kind of take it race by race and maybe month by month. And we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see, follow along and find out. <laughs> TBD. All right. For the follow-up. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let me hit quickly hit stop.